Senator from Louisiana. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, today, for me, in one particular respect, is both a happy day, but also a sad day. With me um, on the floor is Mr. Michael Wong, to my right. Michael is my state director. I'll come back to him in a second. Also with us today is Michael's spouse, Jamie, in the gallery. Um, Jamie is not only Michael's spouse, she in her own right is a nationally known and locally renowned expert in special education. Michael and Jamie have uh, two children. I'm going to read their full names and embarrass them. Mr. Thomas Miller Wong and Miss Julia Rose Wong. Thomas is seven, Julia is five. They are both whip smart. They're both future leaders of this country, and I hope Louisiana, because I hope they'll stay in my state. On top of that, Julia is quite the gymnast, and Thomas is a heck of a right fielder, and a heck of a point guard, and a heck of a quarterback. And they are both cool. They are both what cool looks like. Now back to their dad. I say it's a, it's a sad day for me because uh, Michael is stepping down from government. Um, it's a happy day because he's going to pursue some very exciting opportunities in the private sector. Michael has been uh, working for the American people and the people in Louisiana for 16 years. Uh, he, before he worked with me, he worked with Senator David Vitter, he worked with Senator Steve uh, Scalise. Michael has been my state director every single day that I've been a United States Senator. And let me tell you, it's a, it's a tough job and it's one of the most important jobs. You know, Mr. Preston, we are here in Washington. Our people are back home. A state director has got to uh, make sure that uh, their needs are being addressed back home. Uh, their concerns are heard. Um, the state director has to manage our local representatives, make sure that they're representing me at all the different functions they need to do. In Michael's case, he's also a valuable source of policy advice. I'm going to miss that every day. Michael has one of the best, maybe the best political minds um, in Louisiana. And he's a nice guy, much nicer than me. And uh, um, he, I, I just can't overstate how important he has been, um, not just to me, but to the, to the people of Louisiana. Um, I said Michael has one of the best political minds. He has one of the best minds, period, not just in terms of, of policy and politics, but I, I want to mention the, the political mind in one respect. Michael uh, ran my reelection campaign, and it, it was certainly the best run campaign I've ever been involved in. Um, I, I stepped back. Of course, I was the candidate, but as you know, Mr. President, the candidate is only one small part of a campaign. And, and Michael and his team, and I had a great team, they managed everything from, from the, uh, the get out the vote, their work on, on the analytics and data was just, 
I still don't understand how they did it. Their vote targeting, uh, their TV commercials. Um, I mean, it was, I had 13 different opponents and um, I was expected to, to win in the first primary. Those weren't my expectations necessarily. The media back home uh, would repeat that repeatedly and that puts pressure on us and it's hard to do when they're when, they're, when, when you've got 13 opponents. Uh, and that was Michael's responsibility. And I was just hoping to win, period. Uh, in, a, in, a, in the first primary, I was hoping just to get 50% per, plus one. Michael, Michael, uh, Michael managed a campaign uh, that, that, that returned 62%. I mean, it was just breathtaking. But let, let me talk about, I've talked about Michael's policy chops. I've talked about his, his uh, policy expertise. I've talked about his political acumen. I've talked about the fact that uh, um, he cares about people. And as an aside, a wise person once told me, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Michael understands that. Uh, and and I, I mentioned Michael's beautiful family. He's also always made time for his kids and for Jamie. And I know there are times when it's been difficult. But, but let me tell you uh, one particular attribute among many about which I, I, I uh, with respect to which I most respect Michael. He'll do the right thing. And he'll tell his colleagues in a very tactful way, but firm way, what they need to hear. He'll tell me what I need to hear, not what, what I just want to hear. I'm not going to go into detail, but, but early in my first term, we in our office had what I will call a capital T, tough, capital S, capital I issue. I'll call it a tough issue. And it involved our whole office. And I thought I knew how to solve this capital T tough, capital I issue. We basically had option A and option B. And I chose option A. And Michael didn't agree with me. Some others in my office didn't agree with me. But they, they, they tried to implement option A, my option. Michael had told me from the beginning, option A is not going to work. We need to go option B, but I'll try to implement option A. But what I respect most about Michael is that he tried to implement my option A, but he never was frightened to look me in the eye, never was scared to look me in the eye. And I hope our pages are listening to this and tell me in a respectful but firm way, Kennedy, you're wrong. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt the people in Louisiana. We need to go with option B. And he kept coming back and back and back. And sometimes I'd get kind of angry and say, Michael, I've made a decision. Implement option A. He'd say, I'm trying to. But I think we're wrong on this one. And you know what? He was right. And I was wrong. And if Michael had had less courage and just said, okay, the path of least resistance is just to agree with Kennedy. I know he's wrong, but, you know, let him find out for himself. Um, I would have been hurt, and the people in Louisiana would have been hurt. And that's not easy, because all of us in this room have worked for somebody before. My first job in government was for a, a, a reform governor. I was his legal counsel. And like Michael, he was very, very, very smart. Um, and Buddy, God rest his soul, we used to say about Buddy, often wrong but never in doubt. And Buddy was a tough, tough, uh, 
was a, t was a tough boss. Cause, and part of my job was to go to him and say, Governor, you're wrong on this. And then I'd cover up and take my whipping. Uh, and sometimes the governor would change their mind, and sometimes he wouldn't, but, but he was very opinionated. It's one of the things I loved about Buddy. So that's a hard thing to do. It's hard to go to your boss in a firm, respectful way and say, Sir, I know I've told you before, but I'm going to tell you again. This is a mistake. This is a mistake. And Michael did that. And uh, he avoided a lot, of, a lot of heartbreak. I don't want to overstate the case, but a lot of heartbreak for me, for our office, and for the people in Louisiana. And that's the kind of guy he is. Okay? He doesn't think he has all the answers, but when he thinks he's right, by God, he will stick. I'm going to miss Michael. I'm going to miss him every single day. I mean, he's not dying or anything. He's going to be around, okay? And I know that. And I'm still going to call him and say, what do you think about this? What's going on? But I wanted to rise today, Mr. President, and thank Michael Wong, and thank Jamie, and thank Thomas, and thank Julia for their years of service to the people of Louisiana. Um, and I wish them Godspeed. Um, I wish them health. I wish them happiness. And uh, I can't wait to watch how Thomas's arm develops as a quarterback. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Mr. President. I suggest the absence of a quorum, Mr. President.